We're going to start this concept with a little Facebook math. Take a minute, pause your video, and see if you can solve this. Tell me how much a horse is worth, a horseshoe, and the boots. So I got my final answer is 21. Each horse was worth 10. And you got to be careful. Sometimes they trick you. Each horseshoe is worth two. Sometimes you have two horseshoes, sometimes just one. Same with the boots. They were worth one each. Sometimes you've got only one boot. And you have to be careful about adding or multiplying first on the bottom. The reason I brought this up was because uh, we've got three variables here. We've got a horse, we've got horseshoes, and we have boots. So this is kind of the same idea of what we will be doing in this concept. Three variable systems. So you may notice that your notes have these beautiful graphic organizers. Each of these helps you do one problem. Yes, they're a little on the long side, but this graphic organizer will be great help to you, um, especially in your homework, to kind of keep things organized. So the first thing that you always do is you list your three equations. So if you've got a homework problem pulled up, make sure you write your three equations up here in the top box. Next, the graphic organizer tells me to group equations one and equations two together. So see how I've copied those down. And I'm going to choose a variable to eliminate. On the right side, I'm grouping equations two and three, and I'm going to eliminate the same variable. Go ahead and underline or highlight that word same. People sometimes make mistakes because they'll eliminate a different variable on this right side here, and that just does not work out. So let's look back at our first box here with equations one and two, and we need to pick any, er, a variable to eliminate. Our x's are not opposites, nor are they very close to being opposites. Y's and z's, we could kind of easily make one of those opposites. Let's go with z in this equation. So if we want to make opposites for our z's, we have a negative 3z on the bottom. We need to make the top z be a positive 3z. The way we're going to do that is just multiply everything by a positive 3. So go ahead and distribute 3 to that top equation and just rewrite the top and the bottom equation in the space below. Okay, take a second to check and really make sure that you multiplied everything by that 3, including this negative 1 at the end. Now that we've made opposites for our z's, we're going to go ahead and add everything down, and the z's will cancel out. Once you have that equation, go ahead and circle it, because we're going to come back to it in a minute. We're going to need to be able to find it easily. Okay, over to the right side. Again, we highlighted the word same, so we need to eliminate the same variable here. We're going to cancel out our z's. In order to do that, we need to make our z's opposites. So since I have a negative 3z and a positive 2z, I'm going to make those 6 and negative 6. So the top equation, I will multiply everything by 2. And the bottom equation, I'm going to multiply everything by 3. Go ahead and pause your video and carefully multiply everything by what you need and add down to get your resulting equation. Be really careful to make sure you have the correct signs on everything. Okay, once you're done, check and make sure that we have the same equation there. Notice that our z's are gone because they canceled out. That was the plan. Now moving down to the next box, I want you to take those two equations that we found and circled above and write them like I have on my slide. Okay, so now this box tells me write your two variable equations from above, which we did, and solve the system using substitution or elimination. If you enjoy substitution, my suggestion to you would be to solve for that top y and you can do substitution. I personally prefer elimination. So I'm going to eliminate my y's by making them a positive 5y and a negative 5y. Since I already have negative 5y on the bottom, I'm going to make my top equation have a positive 5y. So I will need to multiply that whole equation by a negative 5. Okay, go ahead and distribute the negative 5, pause your video, work that out. 
um, and rewrite both equations once your negative 5 has been distributed. Okay, now that I've got opposites, I'm going to go ahead and add down. My y's will cancel, and I'm going to solve all the way for x. Hopefully you didn't freak out too much whenever you got a 0. It's okay, it's a number. Um, but here at the end, we're going to get x equals 0. Now we're not done in this box yet because we haven't solved this system all the way. We need to still find y. So take 0 and plug it back into one of these two equations and solve for y. So when we plug 0 in for x here, we're going to get y equals negative 3. Now we're ready to move on to the next box. Okay, this box says finally plug in your two answers from above. We got x equals 0 and y equals negative 3 into one of our original equations. So look at the top of your paper. We had three equations to begin with. We can pick any of them. It doesn't matter. Since we're solving for z, I think the top equation looks like it would be the easiest. So we're going to copy that equation down, plug in 0 and negative 3, solve for z, and then we have all three solved for. Our final answer down here at the bottom, we're going to write it in alphabetical order. So since our variables are x, y, and z, that's the order that we're going to write our final answer. So we have the point 0, comma, negative 3, comma, negative 4. That's my x, y, and z. All right, my next problem looks a little different. Notice that equation 3 is already missing a y variable. That's going to kind of make it easier for us coming up. So go ahead and write down equations 1 and 2 for the left box. And on the right box, we don't have to worry about eliminating because we already have an equation that's missing a y. All we have to make sure of is that in our left box with equations 1 and 2, that we cancel out our y variable. In order to create opposites for our y, we're going to need to make those a 6 and a negative 6. So I'm going to multiply my top equation by a negative 2, the bottom equation by 3. Go ahead and pause your video and do that and check back with me. All right, make sure you check through everything very carefully because it's really easy to make one little mistake and then be messed up for the whole problem. Now that we have opposites for our y's, go ahead and add down. Again, since we were already missing our y variable for one of our equations, it kind of made it easier because we don't have to work to get an equation that has an x and a z in it. We've already got one. So moving on to our next box. Now again, we need to do substitution or elimination. I'm going to go ahead with elimination because I like that better. And it looks like my x's will be the easiest to eliminate because I already have a positive and a negative there. So I'm just going to multiply my bottom equation all by 4. Now we have opposites for our x's, and we can add down and solve for z. When I do that, I get z equals 5. Now take z equals 5 and plug it back into one of the two equations in the same box. I will probably use the bottom equation. It looks easiest to me and I get x equals 0. Okay, coming into our last box, we have x equals 0 and z equals 5. We need to find y. Going back to our three original equations, we could either use equation 1 or 2. We can't use equation 3 because it doesn't have a y in it. So I picked equation 1. I'm going to plug 0 in for x and 5 in for y, and I'm going to solve this all the way and see what I get I'm sorry, plug 5 in for z, solve it all the way, see what I get for y. Pause your video and do the same. I got y equals 3. In the end, make sure that you put your answer in alphabetical order, so in this case x, y, z, and written as a point.